Hey, welcome to EPM. My name is Victor Lucas. We'll be bringing the latest in everything cool every single day. Today, from deep in the heart of Mexico City, not too far away from Frida Kahlo's place, as a matter of fact. We've got a rundown to get into today, and this one is going out to Drew, who says, I love the electric playground. Reminds me of the late 90s, and he's happy to be able to watch us on YouTube. Thank you for supporting our channel. Let's get started with your rundown. It's getting a lot easier to find other men and women to play with in No Man's Sky. Hello Games has announced No Man's Sky Online, a massive multiplayer update for their outer space exploration game. They haven't revealed too many details, but say the update will include radical new social and multiplayer experiences that are designed to encourage players to meet and play together. They add that this content will have many similar elements to an MMO, although they stress that this does not turn the game into an MMO, so we'll have to wait for more details to get a better understanding. Fingers crossed for Battle Royale! Either way, it sounds like they're will be a lot more for you to do with your friends in the game. It has technically allowed multiple players to meet within the same universe ever since launch, but really hasn't had a multiplayer focus until now. No Man's Sky Online will launch this summer and is just the first of three new updates that are coming as part of a new chapter that Hello Games is calling No Man's Sky Beyond. No word yet on what the other two updates will have, but we do know that like every other previous update, all the new content will be free. No Man's Sky created controversy when it first launched in 2016, with many players complaining that it just didn't have enough to do. Hello Games has been slowly updating it with new features ever since, culminating with a new version of the game called No Man's Sky Next, which hit Earth last year. The Beyond content will be the biggest additions to the game since then. New content is in the cards for an even bigger online game. After weeks of teases, Blizzard has unveiled Rise of Shadows, the next big update for their card game Hearthstone. Like the previous updates, it has 135 new cards, all based around the dark arts, featuring a rogues gallery of new and returning villains. The update introduces new lackey cards, which, as the name implies, are lower-level cards designed to complement and expand your existing powers. Blizzard says that Rise of Shadows is the first of three expansions that will tell a continuous year-long story within the Hearthstone universe, so expect two more expansions in the coming months. Rise of Shadows hits the table on April 9th. Sniper Elite fans can set their sights on a slew of new games. Developer Rebellion has announced no less than four new projects in their stealthy World War II series. First up, they've confirmed that an all-new game is in the works. They haven't announced the title, but say it will serve as a follow-up to the last game, Sniper Elite 4, so it's a safe bet that this will be Sniper Elite 5. They say it's still in the very early stages of development, and they won't be showing it off for at least another year, so this pretty much guarantees that it will be a next-gen game. In the meantime, Rebellion has announced another project, a remastered version of the second game in the series, Sniper Elite V2. It enhances the game, with 4K visuals, new playable characters, and all the DLC for the original version. Sniper Elite V2 Remastered launches later this year on the PC, PS4, and Xbox One, along with the Nintendo Switch, making it the first Sniper Elite game available on the Nintendo platform. That's not the only one coming to the Switch, because Rebellion has also announced a Switch version of Sniper Elite 3. This will be a port of the Ultimate Edition, so it will have all of the content that's ever been released for that game. That also arrives later this year. Finally, the fourth new project. Rebellion has announced that they're working on a Sniper Elite VR game. It's a standalone title set during the same events as Sniper Elite 4 and promises to use motion controls to make the sniper combat more realistic than ever. VR seems like a natural fit for the Sniper Elite gameplay, so we can't wait to get a better look when more details are announced in the coming months. Another big game maker is going to start gaming in the cloud. Valve has announced Steam Link Anywhere, a new update that greatly expands their existing Steam Link streaming service. The way it is now, Steam Link allows users to stream games from their computer to other devices within the same local area network, so you can't leave the house, but now it's getting a lot better. Steam Link Anywhere will allow you to stream games from your computer to another device over the internet, so you can leave the house and keep playing as long as you have a fast enough internet connection. The new version of the Steam Link app is currently in beta on the PC and Android devices, but expected to come to other platforms form soon, Valve is just the latest in a long line of game makers to jump on the cloud streaming bandwagon. Microsoft is working on Project X Cloud, which will let you run full Xbox One games on your phone. Nintendo has begun testing a cloud service for the Switch in Japan, and Sony already has PlayStation Now. Google is expected to announce a cloud-based console at GDC next week. After eight long years in Westeros, audiences will finally know when the Game of Thrones saga will come to an end. HBO has announced an air date for the final episode of their hit fantasy series. The last episode of the eighth and final season will air on Sunday, May 19th, bringing the epic tale to what we hope will be a satisfying conclusion. I look forward to seeing this one. 
We already knew that the final season will debut on April 19th, so mark your calendars and plan your viewing parties accordingly. The final season is only six episodes long, but as a trade-off, the episodes are a lot longer, with all but the first two clocking in at almost two hours each. Game of Thrones has obviously been a massive success for HBO, so the network isn't leaving Westeros anytime soon. They're already developing a spin-off series set thousands of years earlier, focusing on a new character played by Naomi Watts. No word yet on when that will debut. All right, that's going to do it for us today on The Rundown. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again on Monday with a brand new one. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend. And remember that EP Live is filmed in Vancouver, live on location at the VFS Cafe downtown at 390 West Hastings. The next one that we're going to shoot is on March 25th, so please come down if you're in the area. The show starts at 4.30 p.m. Pacific. And, of course, you can catch the show right here live on this channel. We've got a rundown for you on Monday, though. Have yourselves a great weekend. Enjoy all of the content we've been making for you. And if you dig it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, everybody. Play forever.